Hello there, it's Tim, Golf 5 Tango Mike, and today we're going to be using a little bit of maths to help you to erect your first HF antenna at home. No talking at the back. Hey, thanks for stopping by, and if this is your first visit to the channel, then welcome. If not, then welcome back. And think about clicking that subscribe button and uh, maybe that bell button to be told of any future notifications. Okay then, so um, let's say you are one of the many hundreds of people who at the moment in the UK have taken and passed their foundation exam. Well, welcome to the hobby. And you, even if you're maybe a more mature operator who's been around for a few years, this might be of interest to you anyway, so who knows? Um, one of the things you'll be looking to do, once you get your ticket of course, is to look into putting up a HF antenna at home. And uh, well, there are certain things you have to consider. Now, if you're in, uh, in England, in the UK, then there's every chance you probably won't have a massive garden. Uh, you folks in, in the States don't know you're born, many of you. Uh, you have uh, pretty big uh, lots compared to us in Britain. Not all of you, of course, uh, but on, on the whole you do. So uh, we probably in Europe, and especially I think in the UK, are very much faced with the challenge of trying to get HF working in our fairly small back gardens. I've said this a few times before, but in my case, I've got a pretty small garden. In terms of metres, it's about nine metres by... Ooh, I would say about seven meters, but only on one side. On the other side, I've only got about probably about three or four meters to use. So that's 29 feet by about 21 feet by about 13 feet, something like that. So a very small garden, really. But I've been able to get uh, even 80 meters to work okay where I've been, but certainly 40 and up is very, very possible. So let's just see some of the obstacles I had to be faced with. And then we'll look at a bit of maths. In fact, we'll look at the maths first, shall we? Uh, we'll look at a bit of maths first of all, a bit of mathematics. Now, if you hate maths, don't worry. Don't come out in hives and boils. You'll be fine. Um, but I thought I'd show you a bit about how we can use simple maths to help you to calculate how you're going to you know, fit in your first HF antenna and some of the things you'll need to think about when you're doing that. Okay then, so uh, let's look at this. So we've got a blank canvas here and it's going to show you uh, what I'm faced with in terms of my space. So I've got, as I said before, in total uh, 29 feet, okay? So that's 9 metres. So I've got 9 metres of space. So across here then, I've got 29 feet, 9 metres of space. And you think, well, okay, if that's the case then, just under a 20 metre dipole, that's what I'm left with. But of course, you might well be aware, even at this early stage of your, if you've just got your foundation ticket, you've probably maybe looked into antennas already, or you've played around with stuff, maybe on 11 meters and stuff before, or you've been to a club and people have told you what to do, and you've watched stuff on YouTube. So you probably are aware that if you want to put up a dipole, for example, it doesn't have to be a flat top, it can be an inverted V. And of course, you're probably aware by now that with an inverted V, you can squeeze a little bit more into the space, all right? So in other words, instead of your dipole being uh, like that, a flat top, it's going to be look like something like that, isn't it? Okay. Now, there are some things you've got to be aware of with this, though, okay? Now, firstly, you've got to, still got to have to work out exactly how much space you have to see what your sort of potential is in terms of cramming as much wire as you can into your space. It could be, for example, you might be underestimating how much space you actually have. Okay, so when you're working out how much uh, space you have for an inverted V, there are two things that you need to consider. Okay, so the two things are, first of all, you're going to work out how much wire you can actually fit in. But even as critical, if not more critical, you've got to work out the angle of each leg. Now, by the angle of each leg, what I mean is, is the angle from the... Uh, from the inverted V feed point. So you're going to have the, uh, the centre support there and the wire coming down each side. So for each side, you've got to work out whether or not, taking both sides together, how much of an angle you've got at that feed point between both the legs. And that is critical, and we'll see why that is in a second. So then, let's take the first one. How much wire you can actually use and cram into your space? Let's have a look. Okay, so this is the bit where I'm going to take you back to boring Thursday afternoons and double maths. Were you staring wistfully out of a window, wanting to be outside rather than be anywhere but in that seat? Because I'm going to mention the words Pythagoras' theorem to you. Okay, now don't worry too much about it. This is quite a fairly simple way of working out how much wire you can fit into that inverted V. 
So, this is my situation. This is one uh, half of my inverted V, it's the right hand leg. So I've got around four meters, about 13 feet from the center pole to the fence, the end fence. And I've got about 31 feet, which is nine and a half meters of height. So I know that figure, I know that figure. We want to work out how much wire we've got to actually fit in or can, or can be fitted in that situation. And this is how we do it. So you either do this using your long multiplication or cheat like I do and use a calculator. What you do is simply this. You work out the square of both of these numbers. So for example, let's take it by feet. We can use the meters if you want to, if you prefer to work in metric, but we'll do it by feet uh, just for this example. So we know we've got 31 feet of height. So what we want to do is multiply 31 by itself. Now, if you're using a calculator, the way to do that, I'll put this in red for you, uh, to work out the, the square of something, which is something multiplied by itself, you just click on the X, maybe something like the X2 button, okay? X squared, X2, all right? So if you multiply 31 by 31, and then also multiply 13 by 13, which are these two numbers here, you'll get uh, two particular figures. So uh, let's work it out using the calculator get the figures down and let's see what we do next. Okay, so let's take out one stage at a time. We know we've got 31 feet, okay? If you multiply that by itself, or use the X squared button, we get a figure of 961. So keep, keep that uh, figure in mind. Got 13 feet, again, multiply it by itself or use the X squared button, you get a figure of 169. What you then do to get how much this is going to be here is you add the two figures together, which gives us, in this case, 1,130. So we add the 961 to the 169, which gives us that figure. And what we then have to do is work out the square root. So what we do basically is work out, well, what is the figure that gets multiplied by itself to bring us 1,130? And when we do that, uh, what we do is uh, use the button on your calculator called this. That's the square root. Remember, it's like a tick with a line with a roof going over the top of it. Two square root x. And effectively, that gives us, when you do 1130, press that button there. That gives us 33.6. And if you round it up into feet, it's about 33 foot and 7 inches. So, it is possible in this situation to fit in around just over 33 and a half feet in that particular space. And uh, I don't need to show you this at this stage, but in the other side, when I've got 16 feet rather than 13 feet, because I've got a shed in the way, I can fit in just a little bit more than that. So in total, I'm approaching around 70 feet of wire. Oh, happy days. So I can get in a, uh, yeah, I can get a 40 metre dipole easily. Or can I? You see, there's always a catch. There's always something else to worry about. Now, in this occasion, if you remember, a few minutes ago, I said there's two things we've got to look at. How much wire we can fit in, which we've done. But the other thing to consider is the angle of the inverted V itself. And that is very important. The thing is with inverted Vs is that you need, ideally really, to keep the angle. So if we look at this, for example, we've got, uh, say we've got another leg going over here, okay? So this is the centre support. We've got another uh, wire coming down there, another wire going down there, okay? Badly drawn, but you get my, get, my, get my drift. So the angle between the two wires, here, look, yeah, needs to be at least 90 degrees. Once you get below that, you're starting to run into the potential of actually showing some cancellation between the two legs. So really you need to keep the, the leg, the angle between the two legs at at least 90 degrees and preferably a little bit more. However, if 90 degrees is all you can, all you can put up, maybe even 85 degrees, whack the thing in the air, you're gonna make some contacts. But it's good for you to work out at this point perhaps how to, uh, or be able to know how to calculate what sort of angle you've got between those legs. So we'll look at that next. One important aspect of the drawing I made earlier, when I had the uh, wire coming all the way down to the floor, well, there's two big reasons why you shouldn't do that from a safety aspect. Uh, the ends of a, of a dipole have, uh, well, quite high voltages, so that's not good from a safety point of view if you've got children, animals, or 
adults who don't know what it is <laughs> and you, uh, you, you, you're actually using the antenna at the time well that could create some real issues uh, quite high voltages on the ends of dipoles that's one thing secondly from a performance point of view well, at the end of your dipole is basically at ground level you're going to incur a lot of ground loss so you want to try and avoid that all right so uh, what i'd like to do now then is to show you how to work out those angles here we go bad drawing alert so let's look at this this is the ground okay the support uh, pole or support fence is seven foot high that means our 31 foot pole is actually if you take out off it's actually 24 feet above where the support is we've got a run of 13 feet you can see how narrow that angle is it's nowhere near 45 degrees it's probably just about half of that all right so for that to become 45 degrees we have the lower the antenna so it's only 13 feet above the uh, the fence here or we somehow lengthen the amount of space we have so that becomes at least 24 feet it has to be at least level for it to be to be greater than 45 degrees you just need to have much more width than you do height. In other words, in this case, case if we're staying with 24 feet, and it's, you know, because we've got a seven foot high support, then the amount of room between your center support pole and where you're putting the end of the antenna needs to be greater than 24 feet for it to be greater than 45 degrees. And of course, I'm quoting 45 degrees because we have to do the same thing again on the other side. Okay? So, in this situation, what do we do? Well, in my case, what I did, I heightened the support, okay? Because that is basically a boundary fence. So there's no way I could do anything with that. And I didn't want to bring this down because frankly, that would mean that the antenna's performance would be degraded, especially on sort of 20 meters. Uh, well, I can see it doing very well and 17 meters. Uh, is it the feet points 31 feet up? That's, that's a decent height. Um, to bring it down to what we needed to be 20 feet, be even more of a cloud warmer than it already is. So I took the view that what I did, I uh, put a, a fiberglass pole, I epoxied the sections together, and the pole I put up, and I'll put it in a different colour for you, just bear with me while I swap my pens. So instead of it being seven foot in the air, I made it, uh, right roughly the scale, uh, something like that. It's about 19 foot in the air. It's probably a bit too high, but you see what I mean. And then you can see what that does to the angle. We now have a much bigger angle. And if we look at it, uh, because it's now 19 feet in the air, it means that we're now at 12 feet of height, because that's 31 feet high. But we have a support pole, which is 19 feet high. So take the difference away. It's 12 feet high. And we still have our 13 feet here. And now because the width is now bigger than the height, the distance between the centre pole and the support pole is now slightly more than the difference in height between them, we've now got an angle which is a little bit more than 45 degrees. Let's look at what the things you have to look at here. <laughs> it's more than two things. First thing is, you've got to make sure that you've got, um, well, you can work out in general, in potentially, how much wire you've got available to use. Bearing in mind, you've got to have that support high enough to be out of the reach of children and stuff like that. I mean, of city adults, okay? 10 feet or higher, I would say, is what you need to look at. Higher the better, of course, less ground loss, all right? So you work out how much wire you need. Then the other critical thing is to work out uh, the angle, all right? So again, bearing in mind that the golden rule about angles, whatever height you've got that uh, antenna wire coming down to, and this is the other thing as well, not just the antenna wire, just where, where the actual thing runs to, because you might have your antenna wire terminating, okay, a good uh, few feet or more before that support. Doesn't matter, you still take the angle from when that paracord or whatever you've got it tied to meets the pole. Okay, it doesn't matter the antenna wire f uh, f uh, stops, it's where the, uh, uh, the rope or the paracord meets the pole. That's where you take the angle measurement from, right? So in this case, if I had the antenna wire stopping about here before I got to the, to the actual uh, pole itself, doesn't matter, I still got to take the whole run down to the pole, whether it's paracord in there as well or just purely antenna wire, 
that then gives us our run, okay? So in other words, it's to work out the angle again, it's the distance, between, but what you want is the distance between the center pole and the support, in other words, the, the width to be at least equal to or greater than the height between the pole, uh, the, uh, the height between the end of the, <laughs> the top of the support pole and the middle pole, all right? Now, as I said a little bit earlier, if you find that one half of your uh, inverted V has to be a sharper angle than that, well, as long as the other half compensates enough, that's fine, okay? Now, there are there is stuff online where you can work out angles of triangles. I'm not going to go into that much detail now, but take a common sense view. If it's just below 90 degrees, if it's 85, 80, just try it, you know. You can't do much about uh, how big a garden is. You can only do what you can do within its confines. Okay? Well, I hope that helps. Uh, any comments, put them below. Uh, if you need to ask me any questions, do so. I'll do my best to help. Um, and we'll look maybe at the inverted Vs again in another video because uh, we can be a little bit more relaxed as well about how we can put out, you know, if we need to be a bit longer then uh, maybe that we, that we can fit in. We can sort of bend and shape dipoles in, in a little bit as well. But uh, for now, hopefully that's given you a bit, of a, a bit of a clue about what to look for in terms of, if you're asking yourself the question, can I fit that wire into this inverted V dipole into that space? Hopefully this will help you. Thanks for watching and I hope to catch you again. This is Tim G5TM wishing you 7.3 and good luck with your antennas too. Bye-bye.